The stock market is one thing, but the economy is another. You can wake up tomorrow and see the Dow at 100,000. Just look at Venezuela, the best performing stock market since the financial crisis. Of course, that's due to the currency devaluation, but it makes a clear point. The economy can be shutting down and the stock market can be soaring. We need to look at real economic indicators in order to understand what's coming. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at what's happening in the automobile market we are looking at the delinquencies we're going to look at the sales i've got various sources to show you today so let's begin by taking a look at this the whole world is waiting for the trade issues to be resolved between the US and China. Everything is waiting on this moment right now. And I found something so interesting right here. US and China are reportedly drawing closer to a final trade agreement. That's fine. That made the algorithms trade this up. Second line here says this. Both countries have yet to agree on a number of important issues. The two contradict each other. However, the algorithms picked up the first line and and then pick up the second point. That seems convenient to me. Of course they haven't agreed on a bunch of issues. What information we ever get here is always meant to be positive in order to push up the markets. By the time they figure that out, it's the next day, it's the next week, and already the markets have gone higher as a result. But we need real data. We need the actual facts and not things that are conjecture, not opinions. And we don't need information from sources unknown. That is never beneficial. Look at this. Auto loan delinquencies surge past the Great Recession rate. I had done a video about this back in February when this information finally came out. As soon as the new data comes out, I will bring that to you. In the second paragraph, some 7 million Americans are 90 days or more behind on their auto loan payments, according to the Fed's data. I'll show you that in just a second. The number of delinquent loans follows a trend of steady increases since 2011 and has ri risen to the highest level in the 19-year history of the bank's loan origination data. So as far as they go back, this is the highest that they've seen. This here tells us what's happening with the debt more specifically. Specifically, Look at this. We can see that of the $630 billion of debt that is delinquent, $416 billion is seriously delinquent. That's 90 days plus. This shows us the real severity of the issue. 90 days plus can't pay your bills. It's not one or two people. It's not a thousand people, not even a hundred thousand people. We're talking about 7 million people in the United States who are behind on this debt. Add that to the credit card debt, add that to the mortgages, to the student loans, and so much more, and you have a very big picture here that is not being really looked at by those in the media. They say, well, it's just the subprime borrowers, well, it's just that, well, it's just this. Well, that's not the way it works. You have to take all of the puzzle pieces and put them together. Nobody's going to spoon feed you that information. You have to do that on your own. When you start to do that, it looks grim. Let me show you some further data from this report. That was directly from the Federal Reserve, by the way. This is one of the charts that they showed. Transition into serious delinquency 90 plus days by loan type. So the red is the student loans. Then we see credit cards. We see mortgages as well in there. One of those that has fallen tremendously has been mortgages. So after the financial crisis, there was obviously a big spike there and they have been coming down slowly but surely. And this is all connected in with what we have seen with the mortgage rates falling as well. And that completely correlates. Mortgage rates, however, have seen an uptick in the past little while. However, in the short term here, we've seen them actually come down because of what the Federal Reserve has done. That plays a huge role. So if, if you see mortgage rates rising, you can definitely see the delinquencies rising. If the mortgage rates go down, you will see the bubble expand further. It's all up to the Federal Reserve. Auto loans is the green line on here. And as they mentioned, since around that time frame 2011 even a little later than that we can see that these have ticked up specifically with the 90 plus days but delinquencies in general for years have been rising most major automakers capped the first quarter with declining U.S. sales again in March as the sugar high from last year's tax cuts wore off and the economy lost steam. This is basically going through all the details, different companies here, whether it's Fiat, Nissan, Toyota, and so on, all looking poor this year so far in terms of their sales. 
But have no fear, at the bottom they mention the fact that the Federal Reserve's decision last month to put interest rates on hold may limit the damage for an auto market that's seen borrowing costs reach a 10 year high. So even though the borrowing costs are actually on a historic basis, if you look at it like this, you know, they've come up somewhat, but compared to where they were before, it's still extremely low. But we have seen them actually come down along with mortgages, along with other debt, has actually seen a decrease in borrowing costs, obviously that's going to be very beneficial for people who want to get further into debt. Miss or beat how automakers March US sales numbers compare with estimates and you're looking at Fiat Chrysler, Toyota, Honda and Nissan. All of these are not looking very good right now except for Honda which is in the positive year over year change. The auto industry headed into the key spring selling season on a down note with most major companies including GM, Fiat, Chrysler, Toyota, Nissan posting lower US sales in March. Midway down the page, the initial tallies point to a third decline for the industry in as many months this year. The industry is struggling to maintain a record pace that has seen annual sales totals top 17 million in every year since 2014. Obviously, there has been a major impact with the rising interest rates as well as the actual economic factors. Today, things have changed. Throughout 2018, we saw the slowdown that had occurred with quantitative tightening then into 2019 that continues and I'll get more into that in a moment with Christine Lagarde but focusing specifically on what we've seen in the automotive industry the industry had a tough first quarter but with spring finally starting to show its face and continued strong economic indicators such as a boost in housing sales lower lending rates and a strong labor market we are confident the new vehicle sales demand will strengthen going forward so that's the message that they project to individuals However, there's something that most people are unaware of, and that is, number one, the rate of delinquencies, as well as the fact that currently the average in the United States for financing is eight years. Eight years to pay off a car on average, people are maxed out. They are maxed out, and yet the car prices are rising. The car prices are not falling. So you have people paying more for their cars, stretching it out for longer, and they're going delinquent? Do you not see a perfect storm brewing here? According to Edmonds manager of industry analysis, quote, we can now confidently say new vehicle sales are past their peak. The question now is what the new normal will be. And so we can see that interest rates have come down a little bit. It was putting pressure on this industry while they were rising. This is now changing. We'll see if they can continue to do that for a foreseeable future. I will, of course, be updating you on that. But you cannot maintain this level of debt without it causing a problem. So we'll see if this is a historical anomaly. It's already surpassed what most people believe it ever could. This is Christine Lagarde. High public debt and low interest rates have left, quote, limited room to act when the next downturn comes, which inevitably it will. This is so important to me because she's actually acknowledging that there are market cycles. It's inevitable. There is no possible way that this could ever not be the case. So please get that through your head. People believe somehow, some way that the Federal Reserve is going to backstop any losses from happening ever again that is delusional that's the type of thing that you wake up from and you realize i was in a dream and now i am back in reality for many countries, this implies making smarter use of fiscal policy. I never like any of their suggestions, of course, but we like to look at what the IMF says, what they are producing in their reports, because they highlight some issues, they collect data, they look at the statistics, and then they present that in the report. They might have a suggestion, I'm not going to agree with that most likely, but at least we can see the data that they have for us. The market power of corporations has been increasing, with the highest price markups being imposed by a small number of highly dynamic companies. 
I'm not saying we currently have a monopoly problem, but I am saying we should take appropriate measures so that it does not become a problem. There's more to that, but I just wanted to highlight this because what we have today are these massive conglomerates, huge corporations. Look at the media controlled by just a few companies. And if you look beyond that, actually, this information is really just gathered up all by the same group. Regardless, what we get here is a controlled form of information of technology of all of the industries we only get little pieces of it we are the consumers and they just give it to us in drops drop after drop they're not giving us the whole thing and this is what we have to deal with right now that's all I'm gonna end it there I wanted to keep it as quick as possible and as usual I rant on that's all if you found it informative please give me a thumbs up and give me a thumbs up you're supporting this channel so I do appreciate that very much if you want the financial education you weren't taught in school you didn't get taught about the asset classes you didn't know anything about reducing your debt and your expenses but these books will give you everything you need check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com Rising costs have led people in California to flee to other states. If you watch this video and break it all down, see you there.